Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I greet you in the name of God the Father and as always the indwelling presence of Holy Spirit. I am Elijah from Sound Doctrine Deliverance Ministries out in Emporia, Virginia. And I just praise God for being with you today. Forgive me if I look a little rough. I just got off work. <clears throat> and I normally wouldn't do a video on this evening, but I have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit because as I was at work today, chewing and meditating on some things and praying for some people and keeping some people in prayer, he pressed it upon my heart to do this particular video. It's not long, it's very short, but it's very necessary. So I want to say greetings and God bless you to Bishop Bunn out in North Carolina. I want to say greetings and God bless you to Pastor Rainey over in the Philippines who's working with his flock, being a diligent servant of the Lord. I want to say greetings and blessings to Apostle Thornton down in Norfolk, Virginia and say greetings and blessings to Pastor White also down in the Norfolk area. God bless you. God be with you. Um, listen. To all of you who <clears throat> do study with me, to those of you who ask me certain questions, to those of you who are in the ministry, if you're new to the ministry, especially if you're new to the ministry, um, even if you're not in the position of, of a pastor or, or a prophet or an apostle, but you're in ministry, you're seeking God, you want to know what it is God would have you to do, you want him to order your steps. This is what you need to ask yourself, and I'm, I'm very serious about this. Have you counted the cost of your ministry? And have you really considered who it is or what it is in your life that will cause you to compromise your commitment to God? Those of you young in the ministry, those of you who are, are leading a flock, those of you who teach a Bible study, those of you who do any type of counseling, those of you who are used to speak in other people's lives, those of you who are called upon to give direction, I'm asking you, have, have you stopped to consider who it is or what it is in your life that will cause you to jeopardize your commitment your diligence to God. What do I mean? This is what I need you to understand. And I'm especially speaking to those of you who are new and fresh in ministry. When you go to proclaim what thus saith the Lord, I will tell you what I have told every homiletics class that I have taught, every student, Every minister that I talk to, in class or out of class, that asks certain questions, I'm going to tell you this right now. If your commitment and your dedication is at 100% for God, if your commitment and your dedication is at 100% to rightly dividing the word of truth and declaring what thus saith the Lord, then you need to step away from teaching and speaking into other people's lives. If there is a person and their friendship, their relationship with you means so much to you that when it comes to the word of God, you would even consider compromising the word. You need to step away from the ministry. If there's a person or individual in your life whether it's a blood relative, whether it's a member of the church, whether it's a friend at work, whether it's a next door neighbor, if you thinking, you proclaiming the word of God is going to offend them and it bothers you, you need to reconsider your work in ministry. My young brothers and sisters, especially those of you called to ministry, this is what God would have me to tell you. This is what you need to understand. There can be no compromise when it comes to teaching God's word, there can be no compromise. You cannot be worried about people's feelings. You cannot be worried about people's opinion. 
You cannot be worried about who's going to get upset with you, who's going to get mad at you, who don't want to talk to you, who don't want to call you, who don't want to answer the phone when you call. That can be the least of your concern when you are called to teach and proclaim the word of God. Because understand this, brothers and sisters, the people in the church that say they love you, the people in the church that say they support you, those are going to be the ones that turn on you as soon as you start to teach something or preach something that goes against their own personal belief. I did not say that goes against the word of God. I said that goes against their own personal belief. And if losing that friendship or losing that connection is going to bother you, to the point of causing you to be anxious or stagnant, then you need to consider your walk and your call in this ministry. You do not have time, nor should you waste energy focusing on who's upset behind you proclaiming the word of God as long as you're proclaiming the truth and rightly dividing his word. You don't have time to worry about who doesn't answer the phone? You don't have time to worry about who doesn't respond to your messages. Let them be mad, miserable, and upset on their own. Let them talk about you. Let them shun you. Let them do all of that. Because it's the same thing the religious leaders did to Jesus. So count yourself lucky and count it all joy. Shake the dust off your feet and keep on moving. Because for every person that walks away from you because of the truth you speak in ministry, God will replace them tenfold with somebody of better character that will add more value and that is genuine. You hear these sayings, you always hear this cliche, they say God brings people in your life sometime for a season, sometime for a reason. Hogwash. God brings people in your life to show you the character of people. Genuine people will always be genuine people and be there. But people who have ulterior motives, they fly by night. They're here today, they're gone tomorrow, and your life is better off without them. So guard your heart. But more importantly, guard your calling from God. Guard the word. Folks will always find a reason to get mad and upset. Let them. It is not your job to cater to people's attitudes. It is not your job to try to sway people from their opinion. Declare what thus saith the Lord and let it go. You don't have to go back and forth. Let me share this with you, especially you, Pastor Randy, if you're listening. The thing I love about God is he's going to give you what you're looking for. If you are sold out to God, if you are committed to God, if you are dedicated to God, God is going to open up the treasures of his word on a level that will blow your mind. Take the time. I don't just mean study. I don't just mean read and study his word, but I mean, take a passage, take a verse, take a line out of a verse, take a word out of a line and fast and pray and meditate on that single word day in and day out, two or three days at a time. Don't even pick up the word and go anywhere else. Get on that one word. Fast and pray until God gives you divine revelation of that one word and how he uses it throughout scripture in the context that he uses it in. Find a verse and chew on that verse. Chew on that verse like a dog with a bone and ask God to unfold to you all the riches in that one verse. Find a passage. Find a subject. And lay prostrate before the throne of God. Pour out your oil before the feet of God. And ask God to open up that verse, open up that passage to you, to give you divine understanding and revelation. And when he does it for that one, go on to the next one. And go on to the next one. And go on to the next one. Until it becomes habit to you to just lay out before God on any subject, on any passage, on any verse, on any word. 
God's desire is to illuminate your mind, to give you divine understanding of his word, rightly divided. So that when you hear untruth, you recognize it for untruth and you can correct it. When you hear false doctrine, you can recognize it as false doctrine and correct it. When you see brothers who sincerely believes, when you see sisters who sincerely believe a certain way and you know it's wrong, in love you can correct them. But again I say, if you're concerned about hurting feelings, if you're concerned about people not wanting to talk to you, if you're concerned about offending somebody, with God's truth, you need to reconsider your calling in ministry. Ask God to attach you to people who love his truth, who want to hear his truth. And let me share this with you younger people in ministry. And this is a gem, a jewel I want you to put in your crown and never forget it. Don't waste your time and don't lose sleep. Don't browbeat old people who've been in church all their life and never learned the truth of God's word, but they think they know it all. Don't waste your breath going back and forth with them. They say there's no fool like an old fool, but there's no fool like an old fool in church who declares they know everything and don't know nothing. Don't get caught up, young people in ministry. Don't get caught up with trying to memorize every scripture because you got a lot of old folk that have memorized a scripture and quote a scripture and they cannot tell you what it means. Get in that word and get the context of the scripture. Get the true meaning of the scripture. Find out what it means from God's perspective because I'm going to share this with you. For everybody who studies with a Bible that has a commentary in it, most people's perspective is going to be guided by commentary. And the only thing commentary is, is the opinion of the writer. When you go to school of theology, find out who runs the school. Because the teaching is going to be guided by the denomination that over top of the school. But when you fall on your face before Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is not of a denomination. Holy Spirit is not of a man-made denomination. Holy Spirit is God. He's of truth. And he's going to enlighten your mind to his truth. So don't go back and forth with old people who know everything and make a lot of noise, especially old people who want to over-talk you and never allow you to get a word in edgewise. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your time. Because it will run you away from ministry. If you are sincere about your calling, if you are sincere about ministry, then fall on your face before God. Fast and pray. Start with your favorite passage. Whatever your favorite passage is, fall on your face before God on that favorite passage. Don't move off that passage. Day in, I don't care if it takes you one, two, or three days. Stay on your face until Holy Spirit opens your mind and opens your understanding about that passage. Ask him to show you the context of the passage. Ask him to show you the true meaning of the passage. Ask him to show you that passage rightly divided. And once you get that passage, start picking the words out of your favorite passage. Find out what those words mean in your English language. Then find out what those words mean in Hebrew and in Greek. Find out the differences so that when you hear certain things, you understand, well, okay, his understanding, her understanding is from an English version. But when you look at it in its original version, when you look at it in its original language, it has an entirely different meaning. Brothers and sisters, that's what happens to a lot of people, especially some in ministry. They will get an understanding of a word or a passage, but it's only the Thomas uh, of... Um, Thomas, not, what's, what's the man's name who wrote the, the dictionary? Thomas Webster. Webster. Thomas Webster. They're not looking at the original language. 
So fall on your face. Seek God's face. And make sure that this is for you. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family members. You're going to lose church members. And if that bothers you, walk away from the ministry. It's not for you. This thing that God called us to is not for the weak at heart. You have to count the cost. You have to be prepared to say goodbye to some people. You have to be prepared to say goodbye to some old friends. You have to be prepared to say goodbye to some co-workers. If you're serious about your walk with God, and you have to be serious, you have to devote the time. You Listen, Kobe Bryant was the greatest basketball player that ever lived. I mean, stop it. I don't want to hear about Michael Jordan. I don't want to hear about LeBron James. I don't want to hear about Wilt Chamberlain. I don't want to hear about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bean Bryant was the greatest basketball player to step on the basketball court. And I will dispute that with you day in and day out. I'm making a point now. My point is, the thing that made the Mamba so great was the Mamba practiced his craft. The Mamba would stay after a game, a win or a loss, and shoot for two or three hours. He practiced his free throws. He practiced his post-up moves. He practiced his drive to the hole. He practiced with the right hand and the left hand. The Mamba practiced his craft because he was serious about his basketball game. And then he could sit down for hours and talk to you about other people who played the game. He could quote stats to you. He could tell you what happened on any given night because he wanted to be great at what he knew he was called to be, and that was a basketball player. So I need you to take that same mentality. If you're called to ministry, practice your craft. What do I mean? I mean, keep your face in that book. Study, research, dissect, cross-reference. Get other materials. Study your craft so that when you are called on to preach or teach the word, you haven't memorized it, you know it. It's a difference between memorizing scripture and knowing scripture. It's a difference between being able to stand up and quote 10, 15 scriptures and sound good and being up and stand up and teach 10 or 15 scriptures. It's a difference. I stopped trying to memorize scriptures years ago because I've seen the futility in it. But I can teach anything in that book with the help and guidance of Holy Spirit. Rightly divided. That's what I'm telling you, you younger ones that's called to ministry. Don't go back and forth with Deacon Wampadilla, who's been in church for 40 years and still don't know nothing. Don't go back and forth with that minister who's been in church for 30 years and they sleep through half of the service. Don't go back and forth with anybody who can never admit when they're wrong when it comes to Scripture. Because we're all learning. We're all learning. Mm -hmm. We're all seeking. We all want to know. We all have to be corrected. I love when somebody can call me out on something that I don't understand fully or I was wrong with. And you can show me through the word, not your opinion. Show me through the word, the error of my ways. Allow me to receive that thing and be thankful for it. That's what it's all about. It's not about who knows the most because none of us know what we should know. None of us. Nobody walking the face of this earth today knows what we should know. But by the grace of God and by guidance of Holy Spirit, we know what we do know. And you have to be confident enough to stand on what you know. So, Pastor Rainey, because I know if you're not watching now, you will be later. Pastor Rainey, he's over in the Philippines. Y'all pray for my brother. God led this man who has his own church to this ministry. He led him to us. Out of all of the ministries you see online, he led them to Sound Doctrine Deliverance Ministry. Why? Because we preach truth. Rightly divided. We're not out to tear you down. We're not out to hurt you. We're out to tell you what thus saith the Lord. So that when you are going along in your life, or when you're speaking to somebody else, you can give them what thus saith the Lord. And that's why I said again, 
if you are worried about people not talking to you, if you're worried about people being upset with you for teaching the word of God, this is not for you. This is not a calling for you. Because the word is going to offend. The word is what's supposed to cause us to look at ourselves and say, wait a minute. This thing is pricking me. This thing is bothering me. It's not the messenger. It's the word that the messenger is giving because Holy Spirit is the only one who brings conviction. We don't fall in condemnation because there is now no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Jesus, but we feel conviction. When the Holy Spirit uses somebody to bring a word to convict you, he's telling you, I need you to look at yourself in this area. Humble yourself. Seek his face in that area. Allow him to groom you and grow you. Allow him to purge away from you what don't belong there and fill you with what do so that you can be a more effective minister. But how do you expect God to use you to bring correction in other people's lives when you can't accept correction in your own life? You should never be in the position of leadership if you can't be led. You should never be in a position of a teacher if you can't be taught. You should never expect anybody to listen to you if you can't hear when people talk to you. So those of you just young and new to this ministry, to any ministry, count the cost. Are you sold out and committed to God? Do you want to please him in every area of your life? Even if it means losing some friends, losing some loved ones, even if it means people walking away from you, even if it means you find yourself isolated from time to time because God is with you. But if you don't love God more than you love everybody else, this is not for you. Scripture tells us, let God be truth in every man a liar. God has to be first and foremost over your wife, over your children, over your dog, over your boss, over your best friend, over your boo thing, or whatever it is that's in your life, over your video games. God has to be first. He has to hold that place that nobody else comes close to touching, especially if you're called to ministry. You have to be sold out and committed to God. In every area of your life. Because every area of your life is going to be used in your ministry. Listen to me. My young brothers and sisters. Find a homiletics class. Ask God to lead you to a homiletics class. Ask God to lead you to somebody that's going to teach you correctly. Ask God to lead you. And I'm not saying, listen. I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm not telling you to leave your pastor, your grandmother. I'm not telling you to do none of that stuff. I'm telling you for the sake of your ministry to ask God to lead you to correct teaching of his word, rightly divided. Homiletics class teaches you how to preach and teach. It teaches you how to break down the words of God. It teaches you how to rightly divide truth. It teaches you how to, to, to seek out the scripture in its original language. It teaches you how to preach and teach above denominational lines. It teaches you how to reach everybody where they are. It teaches you how to preach those hard, difficult things that people shy away from. It teaches you what the word of God says and what it does not say. And it allows you to see the passages that people take out of context because it suits their purpose. Brothers and sisters, listen. When you teach the word of God, you don't have time to worry about opinion. Because everybody's opinion is going to change based on what the subject is. And I'm going to tell you the true definition of a hypocrite. If you never knew what a hypocrite was, a hypocrite is more than just somebody who doesn't practice what they preach or tell you not to do this while they do it. A hypocrite goes further than that in the word of God. A hypocrite is somebody 
who would teach the word of God and want you to go along with the word of God up until the word of God offends them or goes against what they personally believe. Then it changes. That's a hypocrite. The word is the word. The word says what the word says. Rightly divided, the word of God never changes because God never changes. So if A, B, and C in the word is good, and if God never changed A, B, and C, how come when it comes to you personally, now God changed something? That's a hypocrite. It's a liar and it's dangerous. So fall on your face, fast and pray, God, what does your word mean? What does this passage mean? What does this teaching mean? Because I'm hearing this and I'm hearing that. And the two don't agree. But both people are saying Holy Spirit is telling them. Because a lot of people, brothers and sisters, do not be one of those ministers that lie on the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of people have learned the trick to say the Holy Spirit told me. Because if people believe the Holy Spirit said it, then they're automatically going to accept it. More people lie on the Holy Spirit than Donald Trump lied the whole time he was in office. Every time somebody opened their mouth and say God told them or the Holy Spirit told them, no, he does not. No, he did not. Especially when they tell you that the Holy Spirit or God told them something that goes contrary to his word. My young brothers and sisters starting out in ministry. Learn to hear the voice of God for yourself. Learn to get in that word and find out what God said about everything. Everything. Again, Pastor Randy, I, I call you out directly. Because you know the love I have for you. And I know the mission and the journey you're on. And I told you, it's, it's God is going to do some great things between you and I. Yes, he is. But I encourage you to stand strong. Stand steadfast. Really start rightly dividing that word. Seeking the face of the Holy Spirit. Especially when, when controversial doctrine comes down the line. When naysayers start to raise their voice. Stand strong. Because if God be for you, don't nobody care who's against you. They already lost. But fast. Fast with the intent of saying, Lord, I fast on this day because I need you to open up more of your word to me. I need a better understanding of your word. I turned away my plate. I turned away this show. I turned away this, that, and the other because, God, I need more of you. I need you to break down your word to me. Show me how to rightly divide your word of truth. Show me what this truly means. I don't want a denominational hearing. I don't want a, a, a commentary hearing. I want to know, Lord, what you meant when you had this written. And I promise you, the open of the eyes of your understanding will be opened so beautifully. Because a lot of people are going to have to answer a lot of questions when some of these true God seekers and Bible students start saying, You lied to me. You stood in the pulpit and you lied to me. You told me this is what this meant, and that's not what it meant. A lot of people are going to have a lot of explaining to do. But more importantly, my young brothers and sisters in ministry, when you go before God for yourself, you want to be able to stand on everything that you teach. You want to be able to stand on everything that you proclaim. Because God is going to judge you by it, and you've got to give an account for it. You have to answer for it. So take the time to study. And again, I say this and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Don't just try to memorize scripture. Know your material. Become intimate. If you're called to preach a sermon and you got a week or you got a day, whatever you have, when God gives you what he wants you to start preaching or teaching, get intimate with it. Know your material. Get away from writing everything down. Some people continue to write it down, and they have to write it down. But if a wind comes through and your papers get blown everywhere, what then? When you write everything down and Holy Spirit wants to interject something, what then? Because if it's not written down, you're not going to say it. 
Know, know your material. Get intimate with it. Get personal with your message. So that when Holy Spirit whispers something in your ear, it doesn't throw you off. You can just flow with what Holy Spirit is giving you. So if we ain't come in and blow the papers everywhere, you don't need them because you know your material. You practice your craft. You study this thing. I just wanted to encourage you because I told you when the Lord gave it to me at work today, I, I had to be obedient. I haven't even taken a shower yet, but that's all right. The wife that made me some taco salad and I'm going to enjoy that and try to watch me a little bit news. But I had to get this message out on this night because I had to be obedient. My young brothers and sisters in ministry, God is calling on you to really start dedicating time, fasting and praying and studying and seeking his face on his word. We are living in a time where people don't want to go to church. People not opening up books. So when you're called upon to minister to somebody, to witness to somebody, to tell somebody about Jesus, when you're called upon to correct some false teaching that somebody coming to you about, you have to know your word. So get in that book. Get on your face. Call his name. Trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. Allow Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, to teach you. He will do it. I promise you he will. Now, I'm going to leave you all alone for tonight. I'll be back on on my regular time Saturday. And as I told you the last week, because I missed a week, I was tired. I apologize. But as I told you, we're going to speak on the origins of some things that they still celebrate in the church. We're going to talk about the origins of some denominations. We're going to talk about the origins of Christmas, the origins of Easter, the origins of Halloween, the origins of Valentine's Day. What does it really mean? Where did it start at? Why did it originate? And why is it in the church? We're going to break this stuff down Saturday. I promise you in the name of Jesus. And what you're going to hear is going to blow your mind. Because nowhere in scripture does God tell us to embrace or teach and preach any of this garbage. But we have been doing it for a long time. So I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying with you. Walk in wisdom. Grow in grace. I will see you Saturday night. Probably around because I have to work till 630. So I'll probably see you around the 730 hour. I'm not going to keep you long. But we're going to do what God tells us to do. God bless you and I love you. Have a good night.